Welcome back to a very special edition of MLab. If you're new here, welcome to MLab or Bajika Laboratory, where we explore ways to bring our ideas to life. I'm your host, Nisha McCray. In past episodes, we've used CAD or computer-aided design alongside our 3D printer and desktop cutting machine to bring to life a Nala mask inspired by Lion King and an Anulux battery inspired by Avengers Endgame. This week, we'll take a break from the movies and explore space. Roll the clip. There is no clip. Well, I guess that means we need to make our own. On May 25th, 1961, John F. Kennedy announced the latest goal for the United States. We choose to go to the moon, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Eight years later, on July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin of the Apollo Lunar Module Eagle, more popularly known as the Apollo 11 mission, became the first humans to land on the moon. Upon stepping foot on the lunar surface, before a television audience of over 650 million viewers, Neil Armstrong proclaimed the Apollo 11 mission was, That's one small step for man. Shortly after we placed a man or men on the moon, there was no doubt that we would be able to place a man on Mars before the turn of the century. While NASA has been able to send the opportunity, Curiosity and Spirit rovers to explore the Martian surface since 2003, and the fictional film The Martian received a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Musical Comedy because poop potatoes. Mars still seems out of reach. 2019 marks the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, as well as the turning point in regards to mankind's pursuit of the red planet. On July 25th, SpaceX, a space exploration company by Elon Musk, also known for the electric car company Tesla, launched the first private spacecraft, the Dragon, to resupply the International Space Station with basic supplies astronauts need, as well as Nickelodeon slime. As SpaceX is preparing to send the first manned crew to Mars by 2024, and with their Falcon Heavy payload expected to reach Mars this October with a Tesla car on board, of course, and NASA launching its Mars 2030 initiative, we are witnessing not only governments and companies like Jeff Bezos of Amazon's Blue Origin or Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic beginning to pursue the red planet, but individuals as well. In particular, women, including astronaut Dr. Yvonne Cagle, Dr. C.N. Proctor, Dr. Danielle Wood of the MIT Media Lab, and Taylor Richardson, to just name a few already charting our path to Mars. In honor of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, as well as these lovely ladies, we decided to create a project that could be used for NASA's 2030 mission to Mars, a planter. This project can be done solo or as a family project to explore the mission to Mars in a fun and engaging way. Now, you may be asking or should be asking, Nisha, why are we building a planter in the first place? Well, the journey to Mars is approximately nine months, meaning that those brave individuals will need to figure out not only how to carry sufficient food for the journey, but ensure they don't suffer from food fatigue, which is when your brain starts to shut down if there isn't enough variety in your diet. Not something you want to happen if you're in space. To ensure the brave men and women of the Mars 2030 mission aren't stuck eating peanut butter pita sandwiches at M&M's, just like on Earth, a garden is a perfect solution as it provides fresh herbs, vegetables, and even fruit to supplement the diets of space travelers. However, given how confined space is aboard the spacecraft, we have to keep in mind that bigger isn't always better. Therefore, a small garden or a planter approximately four inches, like this one right here, that can house a few healthy plants would be ideal. Now we know the type of planner we would like to create, let's move on to the design of our planner. For our planner, as I constantly state on this show, I'm not an artist. I'm gonna draw inspiration from a media lab project from my alma mater, MIT, called the Tesseray, which stands for Tessellated Electromagnetic Space Structures for the Exploration of Reconfigurable Adaptive Environments, which is a mouthful. 
Basically, a tesserae is a self-assembling space structure composed of hexagons and pentagons, which allow for humans to truly look the part of an interstellar traveler or a space tourist while in space. As a lover of polygons, I want to incorporate the design of the tesserae into my planner. Now, our regular viewers of MLab will know this is the moment when we begin to sketch our design for our project. Just like for our Lion King project, we're going to create a sketch of our tesserae project using Autodesk Fusion 360. As always, if you prefer an alternative, you can complete the next step in Adobe Illustrator, Rhino, Inkscape, or any other design software. Using Fusion 360 sketch feature, we're going to create a 2D trace of a tesserae using a few polygon sketching tools, including a circumscribed polygon and an edge polygon. Now, if those words sound really complicated, don't worry. We're here to help you on this journey. Let's start off with creating a base for our tesserae planner by creating a pentagon by selecting Create Sketch and selecting the polygon tool Circumscribe Polygon which is a fancy mathematical term for each side of the polygon touches an inner circle of a certain radius. This will allow for us to create a pentagon or a polygon with five sides with a radius of two inches from the center of our work plane. Next, we want to surround our polygon with hexagons in order to complete the first layer of our tesserae. In order to do so, we will instead be using the edge polygon tool and not the circumscribed polygon tool. Now armed with the edge polygon tool, we can select two points or vertices on our pentagon that we will like our hexagon or polygon with six sides to touch. And boom! Mission Control, we have a perfectly aligned hexagon. Feel free to add additional hexagons depending on how high you would like your planner to be. I'm going to create two rows of hexagons in order to sufficiently cover my plant guests in my planner. Because get it? Like a house guest in your house, but the guest is a plant and a planner? Okay, never mind. Um, now we've created our desired number of hexagons for each side of our pentagon, it's time to finish our sketch and begin the next phase of our planner, creating our CAD model. In order to create our CAD model, we will need to extrude our tesserae sketch into a 3D model for our 3D printer to bring to life. If you're not sick of polygons, pentagons, and hexagons yet, don't worry, we're close to the end. Once we've extruded our individual components, it's time to start assembling our hexagons around our pentagon. In order to form the base of our planner, we need to take a very quick math break, so excuse me for one moment. There's six sides in a hexagon, there's five sides. Okay. Based on my calculations and given the fact our base is a pentagon, we will need to rotate every hexagon along each side of our pentagon by 36 degrees exactly in order to create our first layer of the tesserae and then 72 degrees and then 108 degrees for the third layer if we decide to build that high. Make sure to use the Align tool in your modified toolbar to ensure your polygons are perfectly aligned as this tesserae relies on precision, like precise precision. Dr. Katherine Johnson level precision, hashtag hidden figures. Once we've rotated every hexagon along each corresponding side of the polygon, you'll notice we have a number of inverted pentagon shaped gaps between our hexagon layers. No worries, we can easily fill those in using Fusion's loft tool, which is like duct tape for CAD models. We simply select the two sides we want to fill, go to our create toolbar, select loft and voila, gaps no more. Now we will continue to use the loft tool in order to fill in the rest of our gaps in our tesserae. And once we have a CAD model of our tesserae planner, we can send it to our 3D printer, a Dremel 3D20, which is perfect because guess what's gonna be on board? Spacecraft going to Mars. 3D printers. 
So on that note, it's very important that we bring our Tesserae planners to life using our 3D printer. In order to print, let's first load our CAD file into 3D slicing software. 3D slicing software, such as Ultimaker's Cura or Dremel's Digilab, is software that will translate our CAD or 3D model into thousands of slices, the 3D slicing and 3D slicing software. Afterwards, the software creates instructions known as G-code for our 3D printer to know exactly what to print for each slice to form our 3D print. Once we have our G-code, I'm going to download it onto my SD card, remove, insert into my Dremel, go through the menu, and build. While we wait for our Tesserae planner to come to life, Let's explore how our Boston Design Academy participants are utilizing the research and knowledge from NASA's Apollo 11 mission into projects like the MIT Media Lab's Tesserae project in order to help mankind's next giant leap, to the red planet that is, at Boston Public Library. Wow. Very clever. This summer is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission, the mission that brought mankind to the moon. One small step and one giant leap all at the same time. So we asked ourselves this summer, in collaboration with the Timothy Smith Network, the City of Boston, and Boston Public Library, we know what our past was. What is our future? In particular, what bodes for mankind on the red planet in the year 2030? So in collaboration with NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, we asked our Boston Design Academy participants, what would you make for the first Earthlings traveling to Mars in the year 2030? Let's take a peek at what the future really holds. Cloud9 is a VR headset that feels like a um, sleep mask, eye mask. It's comfortable and it's really durable. And it's for astronauts so when they go to Mars to help them sleep and to help them with their eyes because in space you could become partially blind. The importance of a program such as BDA is endless. When you can wake up academics, wake up a curriculum, and expose them to the real world, and it helps them answer the question, why do I need to know this, is just extremely powerful. I feel like, wow, I did that. If you would like to learn more about Bajika programs and offerings, feel free to check out our website at bajika.org, as well as our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to catch up on the latest projects that we're coming up with. Now don't forget, build, make, and learn. We would love to give a shout out to the Timothy Smith Network, Boston Public Library, the City of Boston Education Cabinet, Autodesk Education, and NASA Goddard Space Flight Center for helping our Boston Design Academy participants showcase how anyone can build, make, learn. While we were away, I went ahead and added our plant guest, a succulent plant, and our 3D printed Tesserae planner. In fact, given I had a bit of extra time, I also made this version of our Tesserae planner featuring a simple UV light circuit with a push button and a coin cell battery. 
Now this planner truly feels worthy of being on board a spacecraft. You can find our complete step-by-step -step guide on how we brought our Tesserae planner to life, and even this version, if you're up for a bit of a challenge, on our Instructables. Now that our project is ready for a test flight to Mars, it's time for us to do the same. While this spacesuit is fantastic, I feel like I need something with just a little more flair, like this. Wow, um, now we're ready to explore Mars, regardless if there's life there or not. Hopefully not. But if you would like to join me on our Mars 2030 expedition, then check out our step-by-step -step guide for our test array project on instructables.com. But before you do that, and before I blast off to live out my space odyssey fantasy, I would like to thank everyone who helped make this MLab project a reality. The Timothy Smith Network, Autodesk Education, Boston Public Library, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, MIT Media Lab Space Exploration and Space Enabled Initiatives, and last, but certainly not least, Boston Neighborhood Network. If you would like to learn more about MLab and Bajika, check out our website at bajika.org, as well as our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, I have to catch a flight, but until next time, build, make, learn. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, and liftoff at dawn, the dawn of Orion and a new era of American space exploration. Houston, I've just arrived to the Martian surface, and can I just say, it is absolutely gorgeous. Definitely beats the moon. Oh wait, this is my moment. <clears throat> one small step for woman, one giant leap for womankind, because I am the first one here. No one else got here before me. <clears throat> Houston, <clears throat> Houston, I think we have a problem. I, I can't breathe. Oh my god, I can't breathe! Oh my god, at least I'm gonna die cute though! <laughs>